All right, hi everyone, my name is Jake. Today, I'm going to be turning this digital picture frame into a multi-use monitor for cameras or extended displays or inspections or just about anything you would ever need a screen for. I will be showing you how to modify this screen to make it a very useful tool for more than just hanging on walls and showing pictures. I got this picture frame from my wife as a gift several years ago, and I really enjoyed it. I keep it in my office, I always have pictures on it, but lately I've just been kind of thinking I wanted to turn this screen into something else because I know it can have more than just one single purpose. I'm gonna be adding links to everything in the description below in case you have a similar monitor. In case you're interested, this is an Alluratec 8-inch digital picture frame. The type of screen in here is very commonly used, so there's a good chance that you have this screen if you have a digital picture frame and it will be compatible with the board I have picked out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this project. Thank you for watching and let's see how this goes. So let's get this thing taken apart here. Okay, so we have that front bezel taken off and here we should, we're just going to remove the screen now. So be very careful when you're lifting this off. You're just going to flip it up and all you want to do is release this ribbon cable, so you're just gonna pry up that little clamp there, and it's gonna come right out. So we have the screen, but every screen needs a board to supply both power and signal to it. So this is the board that I found to power this screen. It's got a 50 pin ribbon connector. It's got a power supply here, and has a whole bunch of inputs, anything from HDMI to VGA to RCA. So that's gonna be you know, perfect for what I need. You can use it as a monitor for just about any of those types of inputs. There's also a handy 12 volt out pin right here that I can use to power something else auxiliary off this thing. But if you don't have, you know, this exact screen, you're gonna be needing to do some, uh, some searching online for a compatible board. It's not really that hard. Well, you really just need to look at the uh, serial number or the identification numbers on the ribbon. In addition to the board, it came with a control module. This plugs into the board as well, and it's gonna be, uh, just has a bunch of different buttons you can use to control it. I'm also going to be using the battery I made from a couple videos ago. So go ahead and check out how I made that battery. I also picked up a USB voltage converter. So it's gonna convert 12 volts off of that board into five volts out of the USB. And we'll be using that to power something later on. So we have all of our boards, we have our battery, and we have our screen. So I took measurements of all of those boards and I designed and printed a case for everything. So it's all gonna fit nicely into this case and it has a little bezel that's gonna go over top of it. But you can see that there's slots for the inputs. There's gonna be a slot for the USB output. There's a spot for the battery back here. And then there's little slots for the control board there. And there's also some standoffs for each of the boards to screw into. I also printed a little cold shoe to connect it to just about anything to make it very usable. Basically what it comes down to now is just assembling everything, getting all of the plugs plugged in, everything soldered together, and uh, getting the power situation figured out, and then just screwing it all into the case and closing it up. So the first thing I wanna do is get this step-up converter wired into this 12-volt auxiliary over here. On this board you can see we have a 12-volt and a ground. That's gonna be our positive and negative. We have the same pins here on this board, so I'm just gonna solder those directly. Okay, so I've just got a little jumper wire here. I've tinned the leads already, so they're good to go. So we're just gonna solder onto the ends here. So I have the USB 5 volt converter taped in there. I'll have some pilot holes drilled here. So I have the control section cut out where the buttons are reachable, and I have them screwed in there. And then I have the ribbon connector hooked in there that connects onto this board. Just like that. Okay, so we've got our board in here with our USB hooked up. All we have left to do now is get the ribbon connector hooked onto the board. So the best way to do that is just going to be to flip it around. There we go, just like that. Make sure you press the clamp down. We're just trying to get all of these slots lined up and then push in a little bit and down. Start to screw into our little posts here. Okay, and then the screen is just going to flip back around like that and sit right there. Cool. So you have DC power coming in here, your HDMI out, 
VGA and RCA video. Then you have your USB power output there, that five volt. On the side here, you have your infrared sensor for the included remote control. Then you have all of your uh, buttons for controlling the board itself. One more look at this, kind of how it's all laid out. USB, and you have a 12 volt to five volt. Your ribbon connector goes here and then your control ribbon clips into there as well. All right. And then the bezel fits right on top like that. To close this up, I'm just gonna use some double-sided tape. So that is essentially the body of this monitor. You just sort of print out our own case. It has all of these nice new internals. Now let's get this battery situation figured out because there's a good spot right here for the battery. I made this 12 volt battery a couple videos ago. What I did was I made a spot welder for these nickel strips to make battery packs. I welded the battery together as a test and then I soldered on a battery management circuit for charging and uh, balancing the cells. So what I'm gonna do is take this barrel connector and hook it up as a connection point for this battery for charging and for using it. But that gives me my next problem to solve, which I'm very excited about. So I want to be able to use this charger to charge all of my batteries that I wanna make. It does have the exact same barrel connector. So I have you know two male end barrel connectors. I happen to have two female barrel connectors. So what I wanna do is essentially put these end to end and make a charging adapter. So I would just plug this onto this one point here. That way I don't have to have a whole second plug just for charging. So I know that the middle post is negative. This post is not used, so we can just kind of bend him out of the way. And we need to get the positive terminals put together. So we have them end to end like that. But what I'm gonna do is just kind of bend them in on each other. So we'll just solder these ends together, hopefully. You know what? I think that worked. Uh, yeah, we have the negative hooked up to the negative and the positive hooked up right in the middle there. So I'm just gonna wrap this up in some electrical tape just to protect it. So there is our little charging adapter. I'm also gonna wrap this battery in some electrical tape to protect it as well. Got ourselves a nice little battery pack and we're gonna get it charging here. Cool. Okay, so here's the finished battery. I'm just gonna secure this with some Velcro so it's nice and removable. So the battery's stuck on, now we can give it a test run. So it's getting power, good, look at that. So it looks like this is working. I'm going to hook it up to this camera. This is a Canon M50 with this HDMI to micro HDMI adapter cable. Plug in the HDMI. Okay, this is me looking at the screen. There you are. All right. So yeah, this is totally working. So the other cool thing is, the reason I put the USB port on there so that I can use a power adapter for the camera. So here's what it is. This is a simple power adapter and dummy battery for a USB plug. So I can plug this into the monitor and then this goes in the camera and obviously just plugs in like that. That way I can use this nice big battery in place of these smaller Canon M50 batteries. You can also power things like lights or microphone if you have a USB microphone. Anything that will take five volts USB can go right onto that monitor. So anyways, that's kind of uh, another added bonus of this uh, whole setup. This thing works, I'm really happy about that and I'm really excited to put it into use. So I have the uh, cold shoe mount right about here and I have this kind of cold shoe to quarter 20 adapter to fit on there. So that just screws that on like that. And then I also have a quarter 20 to like a GoPro mount adapter. So there's a lot of adapting options to a cold shoe. That's why I went with a cold shoe. So I 3D printed a handle. So this handle can adapt onto GoPro, screw this in. So there's a bunch of different mounting options, handles, things like that. So this is a very useful tool. Uh, I recommend that if you do have a digital picture frame and you don't know what to do with it, you're not using it quite as much as you can, get something like this board and find yourself a 3D printed enclosure if you wanna use mine. I will put the print files up available in the description. But I recommend repurposing a digital picture frame for something like a monitor. You can use it for all kinds of things. You can extend your laptop display, you can uh, hook up a camera to it as a, a secondary uh, monitor for things like framing and uh, focus pulling, and you can also use it for things like inspections with an endoscope or 
uh, hook up something like a thermal camera to, you know, kind of point around and do inspections like that. But I think it's a great way to repurpose old electronics that you aren't quite using as much anymore. Honestly, with just a little bit of research, you can turn something old and unused into something really great and very handy to have around. That's the kind of stuff that I do here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment or questions below. Uh, hit the like button if you uh, did like this video. Stick around for more projects, things that I'm gonna be making soon. Uh, there's something right behind me that I'm working on right now for my very next video. It's gonna be something very cool. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this project. Bye.